This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Once again, we have this great opportunity that God has granted to us that we may come to your home and bring you the ever-living, ever-powerful Word of God. The Word that will change your situation. The Word that will catapult you to the next level. This is your pastor and your friend, Bishop Mark Karaoke, coming to you with a word of encouragement as we partake of the communion. Remember, the communion is the backbone of Christianity. It is for this purpose that Jesus was born. And in, through the communion, we remember his death, his burial, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. And in his words, that I am coming again. I go to prepare a place for you, but I'm coming again to pick you up so that where I am, there you may be also. So I do not know what your situation is. I do not know what battles you are fighting. I do not know what obstacles you have been facing. But tonight I come right into your home with a word of encouragement. I come to say to you, wherever you are, you have not been concreted there. Whatever you are going through is not permanent. It will not finish you. I come to say to you, our God is on your side. Jehovah knows you by your name. Right now, those words may not even mean anything to you. But believe you me, believe you me, Jehovah knows you by your name. And he is also aware of what you are going through. That is why he put a word in me and he caused you to come to turn your television on, uh, one accord television and through the social media so you may hear this word. If you will hear this word, just like Blight But Myers had the word, go. Your faith has made you whole. You also shall be made whole because there is nothing that is impossible with our God. He asked Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything that is too hard for me? I want you to know, my friend, there is nothing that is too hard for our God. Your situation may be impossible as far as medicine is concerned. Your situation may be impossible as, as far as the bank laws and rules and regulations are concerned. Your situation may be impossible as long as far as logic is concerned. Your situation may be impossible as, long, as far as counseling is concerned. But I want you to to know that to God it is not impossible and to you and I I say to you it is not impossible for Jesus said all things are possible to him that believes do you believe my friend if you don't keep holding and you will believe. Keep holding. Don't turn off your TV. Don't turn off your gadget. Keep listening because faith comes by hearing the word of God. It is not by accident that you are listening to me tonight. It is not by chance. It is by the divine plan of God. Because as we look at the word, as we look at the word of God, this word is creative. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, we have been looking at the words of Jesus Christ the words that he said in John 9, verse number 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And in John 20 and verse number 21, he says, Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be to you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. In other words, because my father is involved in your life, because I am involved in your life, you can be at peace even in the midst of the storm. You can be at peace even in the midst of the greatest lack. You can be at peace 
because even in the midst of the greatest disadvantages or discomforts in life, I came to say to you, my friend, may the peace of God be upon you. Why? You have an assignment. As my father has sent me, even so send I you. I am sending you as I was sent. And be, uh, since I had peace all through, in Pilate's court I had peace. In Herod's court I had peace. Among us, the Jewish religious people I had peace. In the storm I had peace. Wherever I went I had peace. I, I want you to know, he's saying, just as I had that peace, may you have that peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because you have an assignment. And your assignment cannot be done by anybody else. Jesus said, John 9 and verse number 4, he said in John 9, I must work the works of him that sent me. In other words, I came with an assignment. I have done my assignment and now I am giving you an assignment. And this assignment has got to be done with haste. You've got to do it with haste. You've got to do it with speed. This is the assignment that you have. Just as Joshua was given an assignment by God. God gave Joshua an assignment after the death of jo Moses. After the death of Moses, God tells Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I give to them, to the children of Israel. In other words, Joshua, your assignment is not stagnation. Your assignment is not staying where you are. Your assignment will not be prevented by the Jordan. Your assignment will not be conditioned by your age. Your assignment is not conditioned by your education. Your assignment is as a result of my confidence in you. My friend, God has confidence in you. God believes in you. Therefore, he has given you an assignment to do the works and greater works the works that Jesus did, and greater works than those. Remember what Jesus says in John 14, 12. In John 14, 12, Jesus declares and says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than this shall he do because I go to my father. In other words, I have given you an assignment to do what I did and even more than I did. Therefore, my friend, know this in your no one. Know this in your system that you have an assignment. And we did say that to have to, for you to succeed, in the assignment that God has given you, just as Joshua was told, the same way you are told, number one, be strong. Number two, be courageous. And we have looked at this too. We have looked at this too, and we have, I don't want, I don't intend to get back into it, but being strong means holding on to God, holding on a little bit longer. Holding on without giving in. Don't give in. Don't give up. Hold on to that righteousness. Hold on to the word of the Lord. Hold on to your confession. Hold on to the word that comes out of your mouth. And be courageous. Being courageous, we said, does not mean the absence of fear. No, it means you mastering. Mastering your fear. Why? Because you are strong. How strong are you or what has made you strong? The Bible tells us in Daniel that they that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Now, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God brings in strength into your life. I'm not just, I'm not talking about physical strength, but I'm talking about strength to endure any difficult, strength to overcome every opposition. When you know you are God, 
When you know you are God, then you walk in strength. You are a courageous. Then, Hosea says, in Hosea 6 and verse number 2, then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. Then shall we know. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. So, once you know the Lord, once you know the Lord, once you know God, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? You are going to be strong and you are going to do exploits. It is time for your exploits, my friend. I came to stir you up and say to you, you have been local long enough. You have been mediocre long enough. You have been marking time long enough. By the communion tonight, I challenge you. I challenge you that you will rise up and start doing exploits because the, uh, your assignment needs great exploits or leads to great exploits. Your assignment leads to great exploits and that ability is already in you. It's already in you. It is incumbent or incumbent in you. It is within you. It is in your DNA since you got born again. The anointing for exploits is in you. Exploits in business. Exploits in family relationships. Exploits in wherever you go. Exploits in whatever you touch to do. It is within you. Oh, glory to God in the highest. I pray that your eyes would be opened up and capture this word and know that God is on your side. So Joshua was told, okay, Joshua, be strong, be courageous. You have got to be strong and you have got to be courageous because you are going to divide the land to these people. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. No man will ever stand before you. Therefore, go knowing that I am with you. And no opposition will succeed before you. In other words, I want to say to you, for you to succeed, apart from being strong and being courageous, you also need to have the right attitude. You need to have the right attitude. This is the third thing that we, I'm, I'm giving you this day. That you need to have the right attitude if you are going to succeed. Now the question we, ask, we may ask ourselves is this. What then is attitude? What then is attitude? And before, before I tell you what attitude is, let me give you some, some statistics that have come out of some scientific research out of some, some scientific research, it is said, it is said that uh, out, out of the people, out of the people who quit their jobs, out of the people who quit their jobs, out of the people who leave their jobs, 4%, 4% quit their jobs either because they have died or they have moved away from where the job was being done. Only 4% will quit their jobs because of death or because of transfer. That is 4%. Now, uh, capture this, capture this. Please hold this. Then the, the research says 14%, 14% of those people who quit their jobs, quit their jobs because they are dissatisfied. Dissatisfied maybe with the pay, dissatisfied with what is going on, dissatisfied with something in the job. So 14% will leave as a result of being dissatisfied. Another 14% will quit their jobs or quit their jobs because they get other opportunities. They get go to greener pastures. Only 14% will quit because they have gotten greener pastures. Okay, now the shocking this, uh, thing is this, 68%, 68% quit because of an attitude, because they develop an attitude, an indifference towards maybe some of the employer, employees, maybe the employer, 
maybe the environment, they develop an attitude. And that attitude makes them quit. 68% will quit because they have developed an attitude. In fact, I read another book where it said that for you to succeed in anything, you need to have some knowledge of what you are doing. You need to have some knowledge of what you are doing. And then number, number two, after you have gotten some knowledge of what you are doing, you have got to, you need, you need, some, uh, you need some ability, ability to do what you are doing. And the, uh, the third thing, attitude. And the research said knowledge and ability contribute only 8%, 8% of your success. 92% of your success is dependent on your attitude. This is to say to you, my friend, if you are going to succeed in your assignment, if you are going to succeed in life, you need to have the right attitude. If you don't have the right attitude, you will be among us the 68% that is going to struggle and eventually quit. But I want you to know, I want you to know that tonight you can develop the right attitude. What then is attitude? What is attitude? I looked in the dictionary and it says attitude is an inward feeling. An inward feeling expressed by behavior. It is an inward feeling expressed by behavior. In other words, your behavior is as a result of the attitude you have developed. So if you find that you are now behaving differently in a situation, it's because there is an attitude you have developed towards so and so, towards your spouse, towards your friend, towards the, your boss, towards the workers, those working for you or those you are working for or your colleagues. So if you don't have the right attitude, you will miss your assignment. You see, attitude becomes your sunglasses. Attitude becomes your sunglasses. It determines the way you see the world around you. I pray that tonight, as we partake of the communion, that your eyes would be opened up that you may have the right attitude in your situation, that you may know that God has said, I will be with you as I was with Moses, that you develop this attitude of the presence of God, that I am in the presence of God, that wherever I go, God is there. Wherever I am, God is there. When you have that attitude, you also develop an attitude of no impossibility. You develop a possibility attitude. Let me do it that way. Say it that way. You develop a possibility attitude because you know there is nothing that is too hard for our God. You know there is nothing that is impossible with God when you work with God. Now, when you know this and you develop that attitude, there is nothing that will be too hard for you. There is nothing that will be impossible for you. Even that which you did not study in school will become possible. Even that which you are not educated in will become possible. Even that business which you have no experience of will become possible. Why? Because you know I am not alone. Oh, glory to God. Somebody realize this. You are not alone. Because God himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He has said, I know you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. M I N E. Mine. Capital letters. Jehovah says, You are mine, my friend. I came to encourage you tonight. I came to encourage you tonight and to say to you, Jehovah knows you. 
You belong to Jehovah. You are a God's property. He cares for you. He is concerned about you. Come on. Square up your shoulders. Lift up your head. Put a smile on your face. Get out of that door knowing Jehovah is with me. Get into that office knowing it doesn't matter how many people may be against me. God is on my side. And remember the words that Elisha told his servant, that those who are for us are more than those who are against us. So develop an attitude of God consciousness. Develop a God consciousness attitude where you know I am riding in this matatu, but I am safe because Jehovah is with me. I am driving this car and I know God is with me. I am alone in this house, but I know God is with me. When you develop a God conscious attitude, then you will be able to accomplish your assignment. You will be able to accomplish your assignment. It is this attitude. It is that uh, this attitude that was working in David when David dealt with Goliath. Who was Goliath? The uncircumcised Philistine of God. The terror that had terrorized Israel, Saul, and the whole army. That when they saw him just at the sight of Goliath, they all went into hiding. The king and the whole army all the generals went into hiding. I came to say to you, my friend, a new day has come. I do not know what has been terrorizing you. Maybe you have a letter from your bankers that has been terrorizing you since you received it three days ago. Maybe you have a letter from the auctioneers who, has, who have given you seven days before they auction your shamba. Maybe you have a letter from your boss which has given you the final warning. Or maybe you have even been suspended. You are not working, you are suspended, and you are not sure if you will get back to work or not. I came to say to you, my friend, there is hope in Jehovah. There is hope in Jehovah. As we partake of this communion tonight, remember that which terrorized Israel the whole army of Israel is the same thing that David, the shepherd boy, conquered. He conquered. Why? He had the right attitude. As a shepherd boy sent to look after his father's flock, forgotten there. You remember when Samuel went to anoint one of the sons to anoint David in Jesse's house, Jesse was told to bring all his sons, and he brought them one after the other, one after the other. And the prophet said, not this one, not this one, not this one, not this one, until Jesse said, they are done. We don't have another one. And the prophet asked, are you sure you don't have another one? That's when the father says, well, there is only a small boy. A forgotten boy who is looking after the sheep. In other words, as far as his father was concerned or his family was concerned, he was not material for a king. He was not material for the anointing. He was a forgotten shepherd boy. But the eyes of the Lord were on him. And I come to you, my friend, tonight to say to you, the eyes of the Lord are upon you. The eyes of the Lord are upon you. The finger of God has pointed at you. The finger of God is saying, you are the one that he is interested in. The prophet Samuel said, you go bring him. You bring the boy. And the boy was brought. As soon as the boy was brought, the prophet said, this is him. I pray that you will hear God saying, this is him. This is her. This is him. This is her. This is the person that has been chosen by God to be transformed tonight. This is the person 
whose status is changing tonight. I'm looking for that somebody. I'm looking for that person. Somebody say, I am here. Oh, come on. Somebody say, I am here. Write and tell me, I am here. I am the one. I am the person. I have captured the word. Tonight is my word. Tonight is my night. I receive the word. I receive the change. I am going for it in the name of of Jesus Christ. When you have a winner's attitude, when you have a God-conscious attitude, there is nothing that will be difficult for you, that will be too hard for you. David was anointed king. He was anointed king, but he still went back to take care of the sheep. He took care of his father's flock. When the bear came, he killed the bear. And saved the lamb. When the lion came, he killed the lion and saved the lamb. Why? He had this attitude that God is with me. That Jehovah is with me. Oh, glory to God. Because of that attitude, when he went to the battlefield to take food for his brothers, and he saw Israel running away, and the king running away, hiding in their tents, David was agitated. And he knew this Philistine, this Philistine is, has no covenant with God. But I have a covenant with God. Because of that covenant he had with God, he said, this one, I will fix. This one I will take care of. Remember, I have told you before and I will say it again. When Saul and Israel looked at Goliath, they said, oh, this is too large. This, this man is too big for any one of us to handle. This giant is too big for us to handle. In other words, we can't attempt but when David came, even without any armory, without any weapons, he looked at the giant. And David must have said within him, Ha, this giant is too big for me to miss. This one, even if I closed my eyes, I can't miss. This one, I will deal with. I will deal with this one. Why? Because David had a God presence or God consciousness attitude. He was conscious that God is with him as God was with him when he killed the lion, when he killed the bear. He had a testimony, Boana. My friend, I want you to know that our God is with us. Jehovah is with you right there where you are. I do not know whether you have come to a point where you are saying, I am forgotten. Nobody is thinking about me. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to approach. I want to say to you, my friend, Jehovah is with you. And he has sent me, oh glory to God. He has sent me to come and tell you, fear not, my friend. Don't be dismayed. Have the right attitude. Be strong. Be courageous. Have the right attitude that in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You are more than a conqueror, wherever you are. That situation has already been conquered for you. And the victory is given to you. That victory makes you more than a conqueror. That price, that reward given to you makes you more than a conqueror. Jesus conquered the grave. He conquered the enemy. He is the conqueror. He got that victory. He gave it to you and I and said, go in my name. Go in my name. Cast out devils in my name. In other words, you are more than a conqueror because the victory has been given to you in the name 
of Jesus Christ. And as we partake of the communion tonight, as we partake of the communion tonight, you can walk in that victory. You can walk in that strength in the name of Jesus Christ. David looked at the giant and because he had the right attitude, he told the giant, I am going to finish you. David was not intimidated by the words of the giant. The giant looked at David and says, am I a dog? that you are sending a boy to me with the sticks. Am I a dog? What do you mean? This one, I am going to feed his carcasses to the birds of the air. And the whole of Israel, you will be, the, your carcasses will be eaten by the birds of the air. But David was not intimidated by the words of the giant because his God is greater than the words of the enemy. I do not know what the enemy may have been telling you. I do not know what conversation the enemy has been bringing to you. But I want you to know that our God is greater than the enemy. Our God is greater than the words of the enemy. So David told the giant, giant, you are coming against me with a spear and a javelin and with all your armory. But I am coming against you in the name of of the Lord God of Israel, whose armies you have been defying the last 40 days. I want to say to somebody, the 40 days of your enemy are over. Look at your enemy and tell your enemy. Look at your challenge and tell your challenge. My challenge, my challenge, my challenge. Your 40 days are over. Today, you are coming down. You are coming down. You are going down in the name of the Lord God of the armies of Israel. Glory to God. I want to say to you, my friend, we have a name. This name of Jesus. It is the name above all other names. It is the name of power, the name of grace, the name of wisdom, the name of victory. We have this name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. My friend, instead of waiting for that day when every knee shall have to confess, why don't you confess tonight? Why don't you declare Jesus your Lord and Savior? Have you received him as your Lord and Savior? I want to pray with you that you may receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior right there where you are. Please pray with me and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, this day I come to you. I acknowledge that the work done at the cross of Calvary by Jesus Christ was for me. And right now, willingly, of my own accord, I open up my spirit that you may come in into my spirit and make me your habitation. I thank you, Father, for saving me now because I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this viewer who has prayed that prayer. I pray that you put the seal of the Holy Spirit upon this viewer that they may know that they have been born again tonight. Give them the courage and the confidence to testify and tell others that they are born again. Let the hunger for your word and your spirit be upon them tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friend. Congratulations, you are now born again. Now, as we partake of the communion, we're going to deal with impossible cases. Whatever impossible case you have, Whatever Goliath is standing in front of you, whatever challenge you are facing, we are going to deal with it tonight in the name of the Lord God of Israel, of the armies of Israel. In the name of Jesus Christ, we will deal with every difficult case tonight in the name of Jesus Christ.
Now, as we partake of the communion, I'm assuming you are ready with your, with your family, now ready for the communion. Paul declares and says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse number 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the broken body of Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed at the cross of Calvary. As we partake of this bread and this cup, Lord, I pray that your strength will come into every individual participating in the communion, in their homes or wherever they are, that healing shall be manifested, that there shall be transformation, and every Goliath in their life shall fall dead in Jesus' name and for your own glory. And everybody said, Amen. Now let us partake of the bread together. Let us partake of the cup together and deal with every impossible case in your situation. Now, after partaking of the communion, I come to you. I look at your situation. I address your predicament. I address your Goliath tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, every Goliath that has been standing in front of this viewer, intimidating this viewer, I stand against you. I come against you in the name of Jesus Christ and command you to crumble down and die by fire. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, every sickness and disease, every spirit of infirmity, every failure and frustration, every manner of evil that has been pursuing this believer, this viewer, this individual, I challenge you now in the name of Jesus and I command you to die from the root in Jesus' name. My friend, my brother, my sister, right there where you are, receive your miracle. Tonight is your night. It is done. Receive an attitude of praise. Receive an attitude of thanksgiving. Receive an attitude of celebration. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank God now. Start thanking God. Start telling God, thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Lord, for touching me. Thank you for healing me. I receive my healing. I receive my miracle. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please, my friend, write to me. Send me a text message. Tell me what has happened tonight. Tell me what your faith is. Tell me what you have received from the Lord tonight. Right there where you are, a new day has come. Change has come in your situation. You shall see it and feel it and experience it in Jesus' name. Some of you have received it already and you know it in your Noah. Others, by the time you rise up tomorrow morning, you will realize, oh, that pain is gone. That problem is gone. By the time you get to your office, you will discover the challenge is already over. Why? Because God is with us. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. 
Go and do the assignment. Go and fulfill your assignment in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Just before you go, I want to say to you, it is time for us to worship God with our substance. Worship is not complete without placing the offering on the altar. We place our sacrifice on the altar. This is an altar. From this altar, millions of people are being helped. From this altar, there are hundreds of thousands of people whose lives are being transformed. You are one of them. I want to encourage you. I want to ask you, get your offering ready. Get your sacrifice ready and place it on the altar. You can use our M-Pesa pay bill number, which is on the screen. You can also use the, our, the account number, which is on the screen. The account is either tithe, sacrifice, offering, or whatever, or other, whichever. But make sure you place your offering, your sacrifice upon this altar. From this altar, life is flowing into your situation. When you do that, please send me the confirmation. Send me the confirmation and I will get back to you. May the Lord richly bless you. We love you and we value you. This is your pastor and your friend, Bishop Mark Karaoke, coming to you through One Accord Television and from the House of Bread and the Majestic City. At the House of Bread, we gather together at the KPCU building every Sunday from eight in the morning. We have our first service, 10.30 we have our second service. And at the same time at the Majestic City, beyond Rwai on Kangudo Road after Rwai, at the Makongeni stage, we have a tent there. Our, our first our service there starts at 10.30. Is a power-packed service where the Word of God is taught in simplicity. It doesn't matter how bad you may be. You may have been in school. You will receive the Word. It will transform your life. I would love to welcome you. I would love to see you. I would love to fellowship with you. Come and listen to the Word. If the Word does not change you, within six months, look for another church. You look for another church. I know the word of God is powerful and it brings change. May the Lord richly bless you. We'll see you again this coming Thursday for the communion. But on Sunday, let's meet either at the Majestic City or at the House of Bread, whichever you choose, or even both. May I go to both so you can come to both. May the Lord bless you. I love you and I value you. In Jesus' name, amen.